Hi, I'm Lori. And I'm Tamala. Discovering Raleigh, North Carolina and beyond. Today we're discovering Gizmo Brewery, one of the best brewers in Raleigh, North Carolina, with tap rooms in Chapel Hill and Durham. Including an exclusive interview with Brittany, who unveils all you want to know about Gizmo's history. Okay, we're coming in on the Gizmo Brewery, their anniversary party, and we are looking for Brittany. Hello. Hello. Hey, do, oh, do you really want our IDs? Uh, it's kid friendly. Very so. We've got some kids playing up here. Seating. I think most of this seating might be for the animals. Hello. Hello. Hey, y'all are on camera. I hope you don't mind. What should we yeah. look for? Uh, you can take a look at the food trucks. Uh, we have uh, an outside bar over there with beer. Take a look inside the tap room and see what they're serving. We have music inside of this room. We have a special on the glass. If you buy the anniversary glass for $15, you get your first pour with it. Okay. Of any kind of beer? or yep, any beers. Okay. So, and besides beer, what else do you have? There is a alcoholic ginger beer. All right. Take a look and, around and okay. let us know what you think. Okay, so we are inside the room. Also dog friendly. Just get a can of beer here, or do you need to buy, uh, like, by the glass, or you, can you kind of you can get a pint of beer, or if you want the glass, you can do that, and it comes with your purse. If you get one of these, they'll pour it for you back here, okay, and into a glass. Okay. And so that is the the ginger beer, which is Ginger's Revenge, out um, of uh, Asheville, North Carolina. So. North Carolina local ginger beer. I guess. And then claws for claws here. Um, do you want to tell Tamala about the beers that you carry? We have a lot of beers. We have 20 beers on tap right now. Um, so we have a wide variety, different IPAs. We have sours, a wheat beer, several stouts. Um, oh. So there's pretty much something for everybody. Okay, so what would you suggest? The only gluten-free option we have is the ginger beer. Okay, so this is the grilled cheese and the home fries. Got us some ketchup. So we will let you know what we think. So Brittany, how long did it take you to learn about beer? Well, it's been a long time. This is actually Gizmo's ninth anniversary party. So they've been open nine years. Um, my, fian my fiance Joe is one of the owners here, and 
that actually got him his first homebrew kit about nine years ago uh, at this time. So we started homebrewing at the house and we learned it on a small scale. And he came, he came to Gizmo. Um, we came here on a tour that they offered on Groupon. And he loved it. And so he started coming in at like five o'clock in the morning to intern for free. He worked for beer um, to learn about the brewing process and help out. Um, shortly after, they started growing and he got hired on as an assistant brewer. And not long after that, one of the owners left and he bought into the company. And so he's been an owner for about five years now. And since he's been here, I've always come in and helped out and you just learn by experience. So I've always been hands on and asked him what I can do to help and the things that he can show me. and. So over the, it's, it's been about, for me, about eight years helping and getting my hands dirty and, you know, learning the process and learning to appreciate beer because I didn't drink beer like that before. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's, you just come to love it. Do you have a favorite one? Yeah. Um, I personally, I'm a big fan of sours right now were more prominent on the west coast and they came over to the east coast several years back and so a lot of breweries over here have been brewing sour beers and there's a couple different ways that you can do it so you can get a yeast that will sour the beer or you can do what we call a kettle sour and that's when you add bacteria into the beer when it's in the kettle and leave it for 48 hours and that's what creates the sour profile um, so sour beers take a little bit more time, but you can add different, you add those fruity flavors in there, and um, it really just, it's a great beer for when it's warm in the summer, it's very effervescent. So that's, I'm big on sour beers, I think the strawberry goza is my favorite right now, but our smoothie sour, which is strawberry, raspberry, and blueberry, um, is also really good right now too. You sold me on strawberries. Yes. <laughs> and we have a lot of fresh strawberries in the area. They use a puree uh, in their beer. Um, so it's all natural. There's, you know, they're not adding in extracts or any adjuncts. It's fresh pureed strawberries that go into the beer that give you that, that flavor. So. Can you tell us, Brittany, about how long Gizmo itself has been here? So Gizmo, this is the ninth anniversary uh, of the of the brewery. So it's been here for nine years. But there was actually another brewery here before, Roth Brewing, that was here for about two years. Um, when Roth was about to go under, there were five owners that came together to buy out that brewery and change the name to Gizmo, and that's where it became what it is today. But when we started, there was only four taps on the inside of the wall with a fold-out table in front of it. And now we have 20 taps here. We have two additional tap rooms. We have one in Chapel Hill. We have one in Durham. And we're constantly growing. So when Joe came on, he was only the second paid employee for Gizmo. Um, we now have roughly 30 employees. So, um, yeah, so we have bartenders, delivery drivers, we self-distribute our beer all the way around North Carolina. Um, we have, you know, some of the owners have now taken on jobs inside of the company and always growing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, what an exciting experience in life. Okay, Brittany. Well, thank you so much for giving us this interview. We appreciate you taking time out of your really busy day. Thank you. We'll have to do a tour of all the brewing equipment sometime, and I can show you how it all works and how beer is really made. I would love that. I would like to come back um, and do that. And then also, I would like to visit your Chapel Hill location and your Durham location. Could you just um, spend another minute telling us about maybe Chapel Hill? and then um, also um, your Durham location. All right, so Chapel Hill um, came into play about four years ago, and it is located in a iconic building in Chapel Hill. It's the old Rathskeller. Very, a lot of people 
people from the area know the building. It's in this basement location right on Franklin Street. Um, it has, it's a large tap room, all located indoors. Um, the, it's just beautiful the way they put it together. The bar top is resin over bolts and nuts and screws. And so it gives that really gizmo, um, industrial chic kind of vibe. Edison bulbs and it's a, just a really beautiful location. Um, so that one struggled a little bit during COVID as a lot of small businesses did. Was, excuse me, but was that because it's a college town and um, maybe was the college closed for a short period of time? It had a lot to do with the college being closed and all of that crowd going home to their, you know, to their families and spending their their classes remotely. Um, so we did lose a lot of business that way as it's right on the street, you know, that the Chapel Hill campus is located. Um, and so we, we did a few things to try to circum, you know, vent that. And one of them was we added a bottle shop into the actual brewery. And so people could come and they could grab to-go beer um, and take it home with them. So if they didn't want to spend a lot of time in a group of people or around people, we tried to get as much local beers as we could into this small bottle shop in, in the tap room um, to allow people to have the local beers and, and get a taste of, of Raleigh um, while, and Chapel Hill and the, the Triangle without having to, to be in front of a lot of people. Okay, so. and that, that location in Chapel Hill is what, on Franklin Street? It's on Franklin Street. Mm -hmm. okay. And there is a parking deck right behind it, so there's sufficient parking. Um, it's a huge tap room. The fire capacity is like 175 people, so it fits a good amount of people. There's couches, there's tables, there's a bunch of TVs. We get a great crowd for the UNC games. I was there for the UNC Duke game and rushed Franklin Street when we won, and it was just a really incredible experience to be around all of those UNC fans and, and good beer, too. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. Yeah, and then... So our Durham Tap Room, you mentioned that um, it has. We just opened this up about a month ago. It's in U Hill, about two miles away from the Duke campus. So now we have all of our colleges in the Triangle area covered: UNC, Duke, and NC State, um, which is where I graduated from. That's nice one. plug. The, the best one. Um, but the Durham Tap Room has been open about a month. Um, it's in the U Hill location, which is um, home to a lot of Duke students and also faculty, doctors, and uh, people that work at the hospital in that area. It's a really cute little area that's still growing a lot, um, but Durham in itself has been growing a, an astronomical amount. So um, it's really fun to see. It took a little bit longer than expected. We thought we would have it. Um, up and going during last fall and uh, so it finally opened. So how many dogs did they have here today do you know? They had roughly 10 to 15 dogs here with fosters walking around and they all each had on an adopt me bandana so they could meet different people it's great just to socialize the dogs um, but it's also you know important to get their cause out because it is nonprofit um, they do their money is all based off of donations so they like to get their name out there and get their cause out and make sure that everybody you know understands how important it is to have money in order to you know, continue to get these dogs out of the shelters and off the streets. Yeah, I work with a couple of different organizations. Cause for Paws, like I said, I fostered with them and, and we ended up foster failing Draco, so I haven't been able to foster as much as I would like. Um, but we've had other ones here, Freedom Ride Rescue, um, is you know one that we've had here on various events. Um, I've also worked alongside Pips, which is perfectly and perfect pups, um, where they've taken a lot of high um, medical case dogs, which as you can imagine are very expensive and they, they require a lot of donations in order to do that. Um, because all of these dogs, there's some to give you ideas, there's deaf dogs, there's blind dogs, there's dogs that have esophagus issues and they have to have special 
contraptions in order to eat. So there are dogs that have spinal issues that require doggy wheelchairs. So um, it's all about giving every dog a chance, and we want to make sure that we give them a platform so they can they can raise money and get the the word out for their you know for their cause. Okay, well, thank you, and thank you for spending this time interviewing with us. Is there anything else you would like us to know about Gizmo or the surrounding area of Raleigh? Is there, I know Gizmo has just recently expanded, so, but are they looking to expand anymore, or do you think they're going to just stay put a little bit? I'd like to think that we're going to... Um, to hold off a little bit on the expansion to give everybody a break and really, you know, settle into all of our locations. Um, expansion is always on Gizmo's mind. And so in a couple of years, I would I would say it's pretty, pretty solid to say that there will be another tap room coming to a location near you. Um, so yeah, Gizmo's always expanding with that being said. We always need new employees. We're always looking for, you know, brewers, bartenders. Um, if you play music, if you have a craft, we're always doing different pop-up shows, and you know, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, so, anytime, reach out. We have, you know, you can go on our website and just email us and let us know what you're interested in, and we can tell you about the dates that we have and, and things that we have going on. And I understand you have a mailing list. So, um, what do you? What do the people need to do to um, get on that mailing list? Do they just need to go to your website? Yep. If you go to the website, you can sign up, put your email in there, and then we'll send out when we're releasing new beers, when we have an, when we have events, um, when we have you know pop-ups, the food trucks that we have on the schedule, the live music, all of the fun things that are going on are all on our calendar. And then by signing up for that mailing list, you get that delivered to your inbox. Um, so you, you stay aware of everything. You said pop-ups. What are pop-ups? So we have pop-up markets occasionally here. And what we'll do is we'll have artisans from the area who create local goods. And we want to give them a place to sell their merchandise that they've created. We love, you know, the, yeah, thank you. Uh, the local um, business, we want to make sure that everybody has a place to, to get that out there. And, and so if you create something and you want to sell it, and that's a great opportunity to come out and talk to people that are interested in your goods. And and, and that that's here, right here at Gizmo? Yep, we'll have, we have that in all, different tap rooms. And actually, we're starting to do a regular market on Tuesday evenings in Chapel Hill. Um, so every Tuesday evening during the, the spring and summer, they're going to have a flea market. All right, we'll see you at Gizmo. Yeah, we will certainly be back again. Okay, we are getting ready to leave Gizmo here. We had a great time. The band was wonderful. Um, the drinks were wonderful. The uh, food truck food was really good. I had a great time. So I'm going to give Gizmo a 10 out of 10 for, I think I spent just, well, with the, with the anniversary cup, um, my ginger beer and um, the food truck food, I maybe spent $32. Tamala, what did you think? I loved it too. I think uh, I will give it a 10 out of 10 as well. I had the hibiscus ginger in my souvenir cup as well. And I think I spent about 16 or 17. And I had, the music was great. The atmosphere was fantastic. Loved the uh, special little tables that they have for the food truck sitting and just to sit there, enjoy as much beer as you'd like. And it was really a wonderful experience. Okay, so you heard it, folks. We had a great time today. We're going to sign off. So, ciao. Ta-ta.